So this video discuss the two-way selection structure. The decision is described to the computer as a conditional statement that can be answered either true or false. If the answer is true, one or more action statements are executed. If the answer is false, then a different action or set of actions is executed. So this topic discussed in this section. So we have the if else and null else statement, nested if else statement and the dangling else problem, simplifying if statements and the conditional expressions. So this figure shows the two-way decision logic in which we have here the decision condition that is placed inside the um, diamond and it will evaluate either true or false if the condition is true so the true actions will be executed and if the condition is false so the false actions will be executed so um, there are actions that will not be executed for this two-way decision logic. So this figure shows the logic flow of if-else statement. Now we have here the expression. If the expression is evaluated to true, which is not zero, then statement one will be executed. And if the expression is um, evaluated to false, so um, the statement number two will be executed. False meaning the value of the expression is zero. All right. So this figure here shows the code of the logical flow given in this figure. We have here the if statement and followed by a parenthesis. Between the parenthesis, we have here the expression. And there is no semicolon after the closing parenthesis. And we have here the next line after if statement. We have here the statement one. And L statement, statement two, meaning um, there are two statements here under the if-else structure and there are only one statement that will be executed depending on the expression value. Okay, so we have here the table that shows the syntactical rules for if-else statement. Number one. The expression must be enclosed in parentheses. Okay, so as you can see, the expression here is enclosed in a parentheses. Then, number two, no semicolon is needed for an if-else statement. Statement one and statement two may have a semicolon as required by their types. So, as you can see, there is no semicolon after the if statement and after the else statement. Number three, the expression can have a side effect. Yeah, because um, there are statements that will not be executed. So, if the expression is true, statement one will be executed. And if the expression is evaluated to false, statement 2 will be executed. Now, number 4, both the true and false statements can be any statement, even another if-else statement, or they can be a null statement. Yeah, so inside the if statement can be um, included with another if-else statement. Number 5. Both statement 1 and statement 2 must be one and only one statement. Remember, however, the multiple statements can be combined 
into a compound statement through the use of braces. So for the compound statement, if ever, um, you have many statements under if statement. So um, this will become the compound statement that will be enclosed in a curly braces. And we can swap the position of statement 1 and statement 2 if we use the complement of the original expression. Okay, so this figure shows a simple if-else statement with okay, the semicolons belong to the expression statements not to the if-else statement. So in this example, um, there is no semicolon after the if statement and also after the else statement. But the statements which are under the if statement, we have here the semicolon. And after the else statement, there is also a semicolon. So this figure shows the compound statements in an if-else statement. That is, uh, these are the statements under the if statement, meaning these statements will be executed if the expression um, is evaluated to true. Okay, and if the expression is evaluated to false, it will go to the else statement that will print the value of j which is an integer. Now, um, the figure on the right shows the compound statement that are treated as one statement. They okay? treated as one statement because they are enclosed in a curly braces. Okay, so we have here, if j is not equal to 5 and d is not uh, I mean, is equal to 2. If this expression is true, this, uh, these statements that are enclosed in a curly braces will be executed. So we have three statements here. That is, increment the value of j by 1. Decrement the value of d by 1. A decrement. And print the value of j and d okay and we have here the else statement in which um, um if the expression is false these statements will be executed so these are the compound statements that are treated as one Okay, take note, compound statements will be enclosed in a curly braces. We have here decreased the value of j by 1, increase the value of d by 1, and print the value of j and d. Now, um, this figure shows the two statements that are the same because the expressions are the complement of each other. So we have here the first uh, figure shows the original expression. If not expression, meaning if the expression is um, false, this will be executed. Else, this will be executed. And the second figure shows the complement of the first of the original um, expression. That is, if the expression is true, this will be executed. Otherwise, this will be false. This will be, um, these statements will be executed if the expression is true. So this figure shows a null else statement, which is, given the expression, if the expression is true, we have here the following statements. And if the expression is false, there are no statements under the else statement. And this is equivalent to the expression on the right. 
we have here the if um, statement and the expression and not paired with else. Okay. It would be okay if um, the if statement is will not be paired by the else statement, but the else statement must have the must have paired with an if statement. Okay, so this figure shows the null if statement. That is, um, there are no statements under the if. Okay, or right after the if statement, there are no statements will be exited. Meaning, if the expression is true, no statements will be executed. And only the um, statement under else will be exited only if the expression is false. And this is equivalent to this one. So this is the complement of this um, figure that if not expression meaning the expression is false we have here the um, statements under and we have the null statement under the else and this is equivalent to this one instead of having the else statement it will be eliminated because there are no statements under the else and this figure shows the two-way selection structure. So we have here the multiple line statements okay, that you can include the description of this program, the author who wrote this program, and the date created. We have here the preprocessor directives for the standard input output header. And line 7 shows the um, main function heading okay, in which this main function has a return type of integer and at line 8 this starts the um, beginning of the main function and we have here the local variable declarations line and 10 we have two variables here a and b in which they are of type integer now um, statement or line number 14 um, instructs the user to enter two integers and line 15 is um, reading the values that are entered by the user and assign it to the variables a and b next number 17 a we have here the if statement and the, and the expression um, is a less than or equal to b then print f um, the value of a is less than or equal to the value of b else the value of d is I mean, the value of A is greater than the value of B. So, in which, if the user will enter 10 for A and 15 for B, therefore, we have the result of 10 is less than 15. Okay, 10 is less than or equal to 15. So, what would be the statement? Or the line that is executed if um, the values 10 and 15 will be entered. So it will go to here to this expression the values 10 and 15 will be passed here since 10 is less than or equal to 15 and it's true so statement number 18 is executed. Okay, so if ever the um, user will enter 15 and 10, so 15 is the value of A and 10 is the value of B, so the um, resulting expression of A is less than or equal to B is false since 
15, it is not true that 15 is less than or equal to 10. So in this case, line number 20 will be executed. That is 15 is greater than 10. All right. So for example, we will be having a mm -hmm, sample of that one. Okay, that is for us to try the two-way selection structure. Uh, uh, right now, we will be opening uh, a project. So this is so let me open another one, new. And this one, we will be calling this, of course, this is of type C++ and this um one will create a project from an empty project and two-way selection structure okay and it will be saved in this location so okay all right so we will be creating a new file under source files. We add new item and we will be calling this one as a simple two way. All right, two-way selection that CPP add. Okay, so we have here, we have to add a preprocessor directive.